When is the last time you legitimately went out and played in the snow? Frolicked, scampered around in the snow. I'm not talking about shoveling the driveway or scraping the ice off your windshield, no. I'm talking about full-fledged, spread on your back, snow angels, snowball fights. It's been a while for me. I, I, I like to get out in the snow and I can't say that I've done so this year. So I thought I would take advantage of this weekend's forecast. They're predicting anywhere from eight to a foot and a half of snow. I will go out, find a spot that's adequate for wintertime camping, and break out a duffel bag that I put together, equipped with improvised camping gear. I don't camp, I'm not practiced in the art of camping. Well, the time has come. I think it's time I break in this duffel bag, this camping gear, and spend the night out in the great wide open in the middle of this wintry precipitation. What is the purpose? What is the cause, you might ask? Well, I don't know. But sometimes you just have to trust the process. Sometimes you have to trust that if you take the risks, something special, something extraordinary might come of it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's head outside and find a spot and let's dig deep into this wintry situation. I hear a plane, I hear some birds, but I don't hear any traffic. That's good because I want to be out in the wilderness. I want to be away from homes and, and streets and things like that, but I don't want to put myself in a dangerous predicament. I don't want to go up the mountain. I mean, I essentially am in the mountains. We're at the base of a mountain right here, but I'm in a place where if I do, need help or if I need to seek alternative forms of shelter that I will be safe. I think this is a good spot. I think we're narrowing in on an area that's gonna work for us. This is gonna, this is gonna be it. We have some trees, good amount of pine trees that are um, umbrella, umbrellaling. It's, un, it's creating a canopy an umbrella right in this spot here and I'm seeing an awful lot of deer droppings so maybe we might just be visited by a family of some deer there's a couple of buildings around here or there but for the most part we are alone we are in the wilderness which is uh, precisely what I was looking for we even have access to electricity. I don't plan on using it, but it's good to know we have it. There's an extension cord that runs out here uh, that's hooked up to a sub pump for drainage. So if in the middle of the night, if it's an emergency for some reason, maybe not an emergency, but just like charge my phone or something like that, uh, we have that. So I think there's nothing else to do other than to start setting up this tent. So let me, let me get started here. So this is what I have. It is a Coleman two-person tent. I've never used it. Uh, it's called the Sky Dome. And apparently the setup only takes five minutes and it says 20% more headroom. It's a WeatherTech system, it's a trademark system by Coleman, D designed and tested for storm conditions. See back for details. I don't have time to see the back for details, but uh, let's see if this really does only take five minutes to set it up. You know, I have a feeling that it's gonna take a little bit more than five minutes to set this up.
directions. Well, I certainly lost track of time. Uh, it was far more than five minutes. So there it is, my shelter, my quarters for the next uh, at least 12 hours. Right, let's move in and I suppose we just need to wait for this snow that is still not here. It's not bad. This is not bad. This tent, I mean. You know, this wasn't all that expensive. It's got a window on the door, but also if we take the roof off, just screen. It's completely uh, transparent. Uh, I only have the roof on half at this point. So I, I suppose these are all features that most tents probably have. But as I've said, I'm no camping aficionado. I may be enthusiastic about this little adventure tonight, but I don't know really what I'm doing. So what's in the bag? Uh, honestly, as I said, I put this thing together last year. And although I did look through it today, briefly, I really don't recall every single item. So right here, we have Wise Owl Outfitters, the Snoozy, the Snoozy. It's called the Snoozy, and it's a camping and travel pillow. That certainly can be used. The Life Straw. Award-winning technology makes microbiologically contaminated water safe to drink. Removes 99.999999% of bacteria. Repo re removes 99.999% protozoa. Protozoa? You kind of uh, can stick it's a straw you stick into dirty water, potentially contaminated water, and it, it's, it'll filter out all of the, the, the bad stuff. I don't see myself using that tonight, although there, there is some water running just outside, so you never know, you never know. You know, this is just a waste of space because this is a hammock. I definitely don't see myself setting up a hammock tonight, tomorrow, anytime. What's this? Oh, this is the sleeping bag. This is like one of those ancient Egypt sarcophagus shaped sleeping bags. What does it say? It says it's waterproof, windproof, breathable, soft, durable, hypoallergenic. Envelope sleeping bag, the updated version. Temperature rating 32 degrees to 77 degrees. Or is that minus 77 degrees? That's, it's gonna be colder than that. Now, what's this? Power Licks Outdoors. No idea what this is. Is it a sleeping bag? Air nozzle. This is a mattress. This is an inflatable mattress. I completely forgot about this. Do you really need a mattress while you're camping? Isn't that, you know, kind of overdoing it? I don't know. I th I'm actually kind of excited about that. Who says camping can't be comfortable? Don't die in the woods. Heat flex mylar, extra thick, tear resistant, reduced noise, reusable. This is a tent. There's a tent inside of this little 
uh, s cylindrical box. Is there anything else in this? No, this is just, uh, it's exactly what it is. It is a, a tent. I already have a tent. Emergency sleeping bag. Yeah, I have a sleeping bag. This is, this is good stuff. This is, this is fun stuff. How am I gonna be keeping warm, you might be asking. Well, I'm going to be using pocket warmers. I think that's what they're called. They're the little things that come in the packet. You rip them open and you scrunch them up and they get warm. I'm not sure if I'm gonna attempt to make coffee. I'd like to. I figured it might kill some time if things start getting boring. It's a helicopter. I feel like there's a search party out already searching for me. It's right above our heads. I need to make a trip back before the evening finally kicks off to uh, uh, an official start. Yeah, I'll be back before the sun comes down. I'm uncertain about what to do with the roof. I'd like to keep it detached as much as possible. I wanna see as much as I can. I guess we have the window, but will the snow come through the netting? Probably will. And the last thing we probably wanna do is get the snow building up on top of the netting, then put the roof on. And then the snow melts, pours right through. You know, I really should have had some preparation before doing this this evening, I feel like I jumped into this a bit prematurely. And a lot of you are probably at home screaming at me through the screen saying, what are you doing? Well, I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. Here we are. Uh, uh. Oh, that's better. That's a whole lot better light. I put the roof on the tent. I suppose I can open up the window here. The snow has not come. The snow is not here. It is incredibly cold. This is pretty high. I wish I had a lantern because there's a little hook for it right here. Can you hear the dog barking? I can hear traffic. I can hear this dog barking. And it's making me feel like I didn't make a big enough effort to get out in the wilderness. But I wanna assure you that there's a significant, a sufficient amount of wilderness around us. The purpose of this overnight outdoor camping trip was not about survival. I'm not trying to do a Survivor Man Discovery Channel program here where I'm battling the elements. And you know those mornings when you wake up and you look out your window and it's beautiful and you feel guilty just about not getting up out of bed to look out the window. Well, for me, it's actually one step worse. I Not, not only do I feel guilty getting up to not look out the window. But in the back of my head, I'm telling myself, Shane, you should be filming this. You should be out, caffeinated, ready to go, pointing the camera, documenting this beautiful morning. I think spending the night in the tent, struggling a little bit if need be, soaking up the, 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 the sights, the sounds, and the smells of being outside, hearing the snow pelt against the roof of the tent, really appreciating when that sun finally does rise. And hopefully it's a very pretty morning. What's not gonna be fun is if this snow doesn't come. Whoo! At 5% brightness, this will give me, it's saying, more than 11 hours of illumination. Extending legs. Yeah, so now 
I can turn off the flashlight and put this here. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Santa Claus, Santa Claus looks scary in this lighting. Santa comes on all the adventures. A solar powered portable charger, yeah. So if I need to charge up my cell phone at some point, I can do so using this. If I were camping for several days, I could just pop this outside on top of the tent. It could uh, charge itself and it has a flashlight. Oh, right here. Hot hands advertised as being eight hours of having eight hours of heat. I have lots of them. I think the plan is to use half of these, stuff them into my sleeping bag, make sure that sleeping bag gets really warm and toasty and get myself inside of it and try to maintain that heat throughout the night while reserving half of them just in case I need to replenish. Uh, which I'm sure I will. I got some Slim Jims and what would camping be without some marshmallow? Wait a minute, did I not bring it? I don't think I brought it. I had a huge Rice Krispie treat and I left it. Oh well, well the Slim Jim and a few protein bars, yeah. Look at that. That is an electric arc lighter because I brought some snow themed Yankee candles with me. Now, I'm just gonna put these off to the side because I'll talk about them a little bit later on. You gotta save some activities for later on. A journal for journaling or logging and documenting things that happen throughout the night from previous experiences. Whenever I get spooked out or creeped out by something late at night, I usually forget about it. And the next day, I don't even think twice about it because it's long gone from my memory bank. So something spooky happens, write it down. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself comfortable. These boots have to come off. Ugh. Ugh. Sleeping bag. Bright orange. I got orange everything. If I'm ever outdoors and you know there's some hunting going on, I'm protecting myself with orange. This is looking good already. It's not as big, you know, was hoping it would be. I gotta fluff it up a little bit. Not bad. It's not bad. What about this mattress situation? So how long is this gonna take me to inflate? blow into the hole right there. Check it out. You know, I got that inflated in about 45 seconds. Entering the sleeping bag, it has a hood. Like this, right? You get the idea. snowy winter themed candle. You know what? It brings me just as much inside as it does outside. It's not smoky, but something is making me think smoke. Fireplace. A sweet smoke. I don't mean like a campfire. It's fresh, herbal, it's clean, cedar, split firewood, fresh pine, pine needle, juniper berry, a fruity, zesty, clean, citrusy component here. You know, I always think of the little orange that you put inside of the Christmas stocking that hangs from the fireplace. Some eucalyptus, rosemary, a clean, fresh mintiness that gives it ah, that refreshing factor. Makes it feel crisp and clean. I really have to try to sleep now. I don't want to be tired for tomorrow. Just after 6 a.m. 
I can see that it's getting a little bit lighter outside. I can also tell that it's coming down much harder, really loud. I had planned to go out and photograph the morning at this time, but with the sky as dark as it is, and it being as wet as it probably is out there, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get on camera at this point. I think I just have to wait a little bit longer. I wouldn't be opposed to sleeping in for another 45 minutes. And you know what? It still smells lovely in here from last night. Yeah. The snow is so heavy. It's like granules of ice, like sand, larger than sand. I'm gonna wait for a little bit more sunlight. I'm gonna put my snow pants on. I'd really like to access that extension cord. This way I can get some hot water going and make a cup of coffee. Yeah, see, this is not so much snow as it is just little pebbles of ice. There's a massive boulder right here. I think this is a good place to have a seat. We didn't get inches and inches of snow. This is definitely precarious weather conditions. I can see a road up in the distance here and usually by this time of the morning, it would be back to back traffic almost. There's nobody on the road today. No one's going to work. There's a few trucks passing by here and there, but for the most part, it's quiet. Quiet in there's no human activity. Loud in the sense that this ice is, uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible to be out in this. The birds are starting to wake up. Can you hear those? some crows, but also some whistling. It's amazing that these birds can be out in this kind of weather. Whatever happened to birds flying south for the winter? This rock that I'm sitting on is actually a rock that I used to play on as a child with the neighborhood kids, hang out, drink a Coca-Cola or two in the summertime. But it's also where we would have uh, neighborhood bonfires. Everyone would bring all of their branches that they've trimmed off their trees and they'd drag them all out here on top of this rock and we'd set it ablaze barbecues and grills would be going. All of the, the neighborhood pools would be open. It was pretty much a block party situation. And although it's freezing and I can't really smell anything because my nose is so cold, sitting on this rock, I can almost imagine, remember, if I dig back real deep, the smell of those bonfires. I could smell the, the ashy materials, the burnt 
rock. The rock would turn jet black. All right. I hear that train in the distance. And that's motivating me to move forward. <sighs> so I ran the extension cord. I uh, detached it from the sub pump that's right out there. And I had to untether it from the tree. It was wrapped around several trunks and branches. But I managed to get uh, the outlet right here. I'm almost sure that it is plugged in, it has access to power, but I can't say for with, you know, complete certainty. So I'm gonna plug in my electric water kettle and see if we can make some hot water, perhaps make a little bit of coffee to warm things up. We got power. So I'm breaking the rules. You know, I should find a way to heat up water without electricity, but you know what? Survival wasn't the point of this video. So I have a water bottle tucked in my sleeping bag so the bottle wouldn't freeze. It's still pretty cold though. So I'm gonna heat up some water Woo! Gotta be careful here. I do not want to get wet. A portable espresso press pump. I don't know what the correct terminology is, actually. But this is made by Nano Press. I have to grind the coffee and then put the coffee into this little basket. I have my hand cranked conical burr grinder. But since we're making espresso, I gotta dial this uh, down quite a bit. We gotta make this a very, very fine grind. This looks to be a solid medium roast. This is produced by Blue Bottle Coffee. And we're gonna fill it up with this very fine espresso grind. And then I'm gonna take this tamper and tamp the coffee, not pressing too hard. The basket is now going to sit comfortably inside the nano press. And then we screw on the top. Now, we're gonna fill this up with the boiling water. Then we screw everything all together, making sure it's screwed on right. We twist this little nozzle, which will release the pump. And check this out. And that should just about do it. And if you look, we have a pretty awesome looking uh, little bit of espresso there. About two, two shots of espresso. A double, if you will. I could drink it just like this, but I'm gonna add some more of this hot water 
to turn this into an Americana. And bam, a cup of coffee out in the harsh conditions of winter. Oh. Oh my God. Being this cold for this long and then having hot water be dumped into your, your gullet, your stomach, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, I mean, it's hot and I don't even care. I'm just, I don't even care if I burn my mouth. Season of peace. By and large, one of my favorite winter themed snow landscape Yankee candles. It certainly provokes for me that feeling that we see on the, the label of this candle. That open country landscape with fresh fallen snow, snow clinging to each and every branch of that tree and fence as if it were flocking on a Christmas tree. This is a deeply musky, uh, rich floral fragrance. It's got some earthy notes uh, like patchouli, like vetiver, woody, like birch and cedar. You know, it's creamy, it's robust, and it's warm. Season of peace. Ah, where's my hat? And look what I just found in my coffee bag. The Rice crispy treat that I thought I had left behind. You know, I could have really used this last night but maybe I'll dip into it uh, soon. Have it with my coffee. That's That sounds like a good combo. Rice Krispies, I mean, it's breakfast after all. Uh, whew. I could definitely get into this. After this brief little experience, it makes me feel like, hey, you know, maybe I should seek folks who have more experience, who can teach me a few things, so that I can kick it up a notch and uh, do things like this more often. In uh, a year's time, next winter, let's say, to be doing something in the snow with, uh, you know, with higher stakes, with a little bit more skill needed to make it through a period of days. I'm quite satisfied. Why? Because I think I've accomplished everything I set out to do. The goal was to spend time outdoors overnight in a tent, in the snow, to absorb the environment, to create an experience, and I've had plenty of time to enjoy myself, to prepare myself for upcoming adventures, so I think it's about time that I start wrapping things up, put everything back in its proper receptacle, breaking down this tent, and taking the short trek back home. I wanna thank you folks for joining me on this adventure. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And before we part today, if I could encourage you to check out the description below for all of the details on how you can further support the Candle Enthusiast channel, including my Patreon page. Uh, that would be very much appreciated. And what else is appreciated, as I've already said, you joining me, giving me the chance to be able to share this experience. So with that said, I will be seeing you folks soon. But until then, always remember, to live enthusiastically.